Okay, so welcome to this redux of a video that I worked on two years ago. And what we have here is we have a double integral from 1 to infinity and from 0 to 1 of negative 1 to the power of the fractional y multiplied by the fractional of 1 divided by 4 floor y root of x subtract 1 divided by 4 floor y root of the fractional of x plus sine of y square at this with 1 dx dy. So if you want to check the original video, of him, the link will be in the description below. I mainly wanted to do this redux from one that the video, the video was like old and it was running long that I wanted to like help condense it down and explain things, you know, thoroughly at the same time. And of course, that main criticism I've always had back in the past was my small handwriting. And I never gave an outline, especially like back in the past videos I've worked on. I never do that until like as of recent of how we want to tackle such, you know, problems that we were given. But as we see here is that what we'll be doing is first we'll be tackling the inner inner integral, so whatever is in the parentheses first, then there's a bunch of stuff going on. So of course, we can see that we can apply some linearity and tackle things one by one at a time. Once we get to that, then all that's left is doing the outer integral associated with, as you see, the negative one to the fractional y, the power fractional y, then everything comes together very nice and interesting that we'll be using a lot of, um, well, infinite sums are involved and some other special functions, but also a little bit of complex analysis here and there. So expect to see some imaginary units um, scatter around. But um, nothing more to that. It's going to be a monstrous right? So um, buckle up and let's actually just jump right in. So as mentioned, we'll be focusing on the inner integral, so in the parentheses. And as mentioned, we can actually use some linearity. So we'll be splitting this up into three different integrals as a sum of that. So we have the 0 through 1 of the fractional of 1 divided by 4 floor y root of x, then n dx, then subtracts the integral from 0 to 1, of, let me first write the denominator. So four floor root of uh, four floor y root of the fractional of x plus sine of y square, and then the numerator is one dx, and then add this with the integral from zero to one of just dx, which you can actually see out of all these three integrals, you can figure out which is the easiest to evaluate. So let's take things one step at a time, and we'll fo we'll first focus on evaluating this integral. So to recap that we have the fractional part of y in definition, we have that the fractional of y is equal to y minus the floor of y, where the floor of y is equal to k such that k is less than or equal to y, which is strictly less than k plus 1, where k is an integer. So we'll be actually utilizing definitions to actually do a little bit of substitution from here and on there on. So from here, that means now focusing on this integral first. So the integral from 0 to 1 of the fractional of 1 divided by 4 floor y root of x. So as we see here, we can actually do a little u sub over here. So we'll let u be inside the inner of the fractional part. So we'll let u equals 1 divided by 4 floor y root of x. So in other words, I can actually write that in terms of an exponent. So x is um, x to the power negative 1 divided by 4 floor y. Now if I were to fix that on its own such that x is on its own, so that means x is equal to 1 divided by u to the power 4 floor y. And then if I were to differentiate both sides, so that means therefore dx is equal to negative 4 floor y then divided by u to the power 4 floor y at this would 1 and then du. Okay, so now with this in mind, so we also got to change our bounds too, so don't forget to do that. So if I plug in 1, so that would have to mean that our upper bound is going to be 1. And if I plug in 0, of course, that's undefined. So that means as this approaches 0, so that means that means it's going to be infinity, positive infinity. And then now we just do the substitution back in. So I have now negative 4 times 4, 4, y, and then replace this with the fractional part of u, all this being divided by u to the power 4, 4, y, add this with 1, and then du. Well, we can actually fix something here. So for one, I had to change the bounds since we have infinity being the lower bound and one being the, you know, the numbers are different, of course. So meaning that that's going to become negative and then that negative will cancel. And then 4, 4, y does not depend on the world of u. So I can actually fact that out as a constant. Then I'll have 4, floor y, then the integral from 1 to infinity of the fractional part of u, and then divided by u to the power 4, floor y, and then add this with 1. Du. Okay, so now from here to utilize the definition as mentioned at the fractional part, I'll replace this with u and then minus the four floor u. And so we'll get something like this. Then utilizing, you know, of course, with the floor of u. So 
as mentioned from that definition, you can place this with any variable. And as long as it satisfies that definition, then we'll say that the floor of U is going to equal K, meaning that what we have to do is we have to actually break this up in terms of an infinite sum and dealing this like ter integral term wise. So therefore we have that this is just four floor Y and then times the infinite sum starting with K is equal to one of the integral from K to K plus one. Uh, and now to break this up even further, I can use, you know, split this up with from uh, linearity of you know, fractions. That's the same thing written as one divided by u to the power four floor y, and then subtract k, then divided by u to the power four floor y, and then add this with one, then du. And so continuing for further, though, this is easy to, um, integration from here. So that means we have four floor y, then multiply with the infinite sum k is equal to one. And so we'll have the following that is um, being integrated. So yielding us with k to the k times u to the power four floor y, well, negative, and then divided by four floor y. Then now this is gonna be subtract u to the power four floor y, add this with one, and then being divided by, by four floor y, subtract one and evaluate from k to k plus one. The next um, plugin now is the next step and it's gonna be a pretty long one. So just um, <laughs> bear with me on this. If you made it this far, we're not even halfway through just saying. So now if we plug in everything back in together, so now I'll have four, four y. So that's still just outside Then multiply with the infinite sum, then k is equal to one and then everything inside. So let's say we have k and then divided by four floor y times k plus one quantity to the power four floor y. And then we subtract this. So under the denominator, let me put that first. So it's four floor y minus one quantity, then multiplied by k plus one to the power four floor y at the, or subtract one. And then the numerator is just one. And then next we have is now just evaluate this for k. So we have k and then divided by four floor y and then times k to the power four floor y and then minus one and then divided by now the denominator is four floor y subtract one quantity then multiply with k to the power four floor y minus one okay and so that just closes that off so i know that's a lot to intake but now there's a bunch of things that we can simplify from here Rather, um, well, for the four floor y outside, we can actually just, you know, distribute that in into everything that we just, you know, calculated through. So now what we have here is, let me actually put it in this room over here, it's fine. So continuing forward, so we have the infinite sum, k is equal to one. So now after distributing the four floor y into everything over here, so this is now gonna yield us with just k and then divided by k plus one divided by, or to the power four floor y, then we subtract now let me first write the denominator so this is still four floor y minus one then k plus one to the power four floor y minus one and then the numerator is going to be four floor y okay and then now minus k so that we can actually just simplify this or rather now this is actually going to cancel out the four floor y from here so now we have k then divided by k to the power of four floor y and then now add this now under the denominator is still gonna nothing has changed so four floor y minus one and then k to the power of four floor y minus one and then just put in the four floor y on the numerator just like that so that closes that off so now you'll notice that we can actually factor out a four floor y divided by four floor y minus one from these two terms over here so now continuing forward that the infinite sum k is equal to one. So what we factor out here is four floor y and divided by four floor y minus one. And I'll factor this out. So we have one divided by k to the power four floor y, then subtract one. Then we subtract this with k plus one to the power four floor y minus one. Okay, so that leaves things off. And then from over here, what I can do is I can actually move that cake down below. So that means that makes the subtraction of the, um, the exponent. So that means I have one divided by k to the power of four floor y, then subtract one. And then next afterwards, we have that this is just going to be still k, then divided by k plus one, and then to the power of four floor y. 
Okay, so that's still a lot to <laughs> intake over here. So here's some things that you want to notice. So let me actually first start with um, a little bit of a trick. So, and this makes simplifying things a little bit easier. So notice over here that we have the last term k divided by k plus one um, to the power four for y. So notice that k can be written as the same thing as k plus one subtract one, then divided by k plus one, then to the power four for y. So in other words, I can actually, you know, group this out together simply so that we have now, this is just gonna reduce down and then using linearity, of course, is that this is the same thing as just one, then divided by k plus one to the power four for y, then subtract one. And then that still just leaves us with one divided by k plus one to the power four for y. So this substitution will come in handy later. So we'll get to that in a sec. But notice that over here, if I take the sum of all of these and notice that over here, this is by definition forms the Riemann zeta function specifically at over here for this one, we have that this is four for y then subtract one. And then over here, we have the Riemann zeta of four floor y subtract one, but there's a k plus one over here. So that means we move the indices just a bit. So that actually takes us to just minus one. And so continuing further from over here, that that means I'm just left with four floor y and then four floor y minus one, simply because that these two are gonna cancel each other out. And then that's just left with a minus one. So there should be that negative. So that's going to be a plus one. So this is where this comes in. And now all that's left is to uh, continue writing the sum. So the infinite sum k is equal to one. And then now just replace the substitution from here and then subtract everything here. So that means one divided by k to the power four floor y minus one, then subtract one divided by k plus one to the power four floor y minus one. I'm just going to write them some room over here. Then now add this with one divided by K plus one to the power four floor Y and then close that off. Okay. So, and then there's some things you'll notice that, um, again, this is actually by the same justification that we just did earlier, that these actually form nice Riemann zeta functions. So here's some things that we can see that for one, this term over here is the same thing as the Riemann zeta of four floor Y then minus one over here is going to be the Riemann zeta. I wrote that weird. Hang on. This term over here is going to be the Riemann zeta of four floor y minus one. And then there's a k plus one. So we adjust the index minus one. And then over here is that this one's going to be the Riemann zeta of four floor y. Then we have a k plus one yet again. So subtract one. So now if you actually simplify everything out, so that means over here, that's going to yield us with, so let me actually switch back to the blue one more time. So this will yield us back to four floor y, then divided by four floor y minus one. Then now if we see that we actually do some um, cancellation with the terms, so this is going to cancel. This will be now a plus one over here and then plus. So now rather this is going to be a, um, well, subtraction because of the negative over here. So now this is going to be minus. So distribute the minus here, minus one, then minus the Riemann zeta of four floor y, and then plus one. And so therefore yielding us that we simplify all this out. So this is just gonna be four floor y divided by four floor y minus one, and then subtract the Riemann zeta of four floor y. And that just like that, that's actually um, completes the first part of the integral specifically for the um what we're solving for this one over here the integral from zero to one of the fractional one divided by four four y root of x just like that so with all that in mind let's actually continue on and uh, move on to the second integral over here okay so now the next integral we want to calculate is now the integral from zero to one of one divided by the four four root of the fractional x plus sine of y squared dx so just a little reminder, I wrote that we, the integral that we just previously, previously solved is equal to the right-hand side. So this will just come in handy later once we actually are finished tackling this out. So how do we actually approach such integral that we're dealing with right now? So if you pay attention that we have sine of y squared. So in this situation with dx, it doesn't even vary in that world. So we're actually gonna take a little bit of a different approach and call that a constant. We'll just say a, for example. So now the integral from zero to one, of the four floor root of y. Let me just write the denominator first. So the fractional of x plus a, and then now just dx. How do we actually do something from here? 
Well, we actually noticed closely that, and it'll be justified by this little animation you'll see here, is that this is the same thing written as the integral from zero to one of just one divided by the four floor root of just x. And this actually holds as the fractional of one plus a is equal to the fractional a. Not only that, for all x that's in the open interval from zero to one, we have that the fractional of x plus a is going to increase from the fractional of a to one. And then afterwards, it actually goes back to zero and it's going to increase, keep increasing from zero to the fractional of a. So that it actually covers all positive values greater and less than fractional of a that is in the open interval from zero to one. So with this in mind, this is actually where the justification comes in. And then it, I think it's a little neat thing to um, do a little bit of an observation from there as you graph this in a different perspective. So from this, from here, so now all we have left is just evaluate this, which is actually a lot simpler than the previous one because we had to do something with the fractional. Meanwhile, it's just standalone on its own. So just apply power rule. So now just write this in terms of an exponent that's easier to deal with. This is the same thing written as x to the power negative one divided by four, four y. And I just add one and then just divide that. Um, so negative one divided by four, four y and then add this with one. So in other words, you simplify everything out. So we have four, four y, then x to the power four, four y minus one and then divided by four, four y. All this being divided by four, four y minus one. Evaluate this from zero to one. Of course, you put in zero, you're just gonna get zero. So if I plug in one, so all that's left is just four, four y, and then divided by four, four y minus one. That actually gets everything back together, so that's cool. So now really, it, all that's left is capital I, I'm actually just gonna call the, um, capital I is gonna be our given integral. So I'll call this capital um, I sub one being our inner integral that we're actually evaluating. So everything in this parentheses is going to equal to four, four y. So it's previously what we just evaluated from here, four, four y, and then divided by four, four y minus one. Subtract the Riemann zeta of four, four y, okay? And then next is minus, so minus what we just, calculated here, so minus four, four y, then divided by four, four y minus one, and then the integral of one, it's basically just easy, it's just <laughs> one. Okay, and so we just, of course, cancel out some things. This is actually just gonna be straightforward to see that um, everything comes down to nicely just one, and then subtract the Riemann zeta of four, four y. Okay, so this is great. Now, um, all we have to do is just substitute this back into over here, but before we get to that, there's actually some things you want to um, take an pay close attention to that's actually gonna make simplification and evaluate things a little bit easier. So here's the thing to notice. So to observe that the if I take the fractional of the Riemann zeta of four floor y for instance, then in other words, if I just use that definition for you know the fractional part that says that it's just the Riemann zeta of four floor y, and then subtract the floor of the Riemann zeta of four floor y, then if I actually expand this out with a series representation, so that means now we have the Riemann zeta of four floor y, and then expand this out, it's supposed to be minus, so minus the floor of now just one divided by one to the power four four y, add this with one divided by two to the power four four y, plus one divided by three to the power four floor y, and then keep going on so on so forth, so take the floor of that. You'll notice that obviously for one, one divided by one to some power is just gonna be one, but then anything we take in for four, four y and then exponential as we take that from one to infinity under the denominator, it actually gets increasingly smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. So we think about this perspectively and how you actually evaluate this, or you can actually prove this too, that it's actually gonna be less than two. So it's between one and two, but if I take the floor of that, this is actually just simply just gonna to equal to just one. So we have that now this is the Riemann zeta of four, four y, then subtract one, which is very similar to what we've written over here, one minus the Riemann zeta of four, four y, but just multiply the negative to both sides. So therefore this is the same thing as just the negative um, fractional of the Riemann zeta of four, four y. And so with that, we can actually do a little bit of a substitution back into over here. So what we're dealing with next. And keep in mind that something like this, it's gonna come in handy in the later future. So I just, um, just Keep that in the back of your head before we get to that step. So now continuing forward. So now what we have now is, okay, so capital I is, as I mentioned, the entire given integral that we want to evaluate. So substituting all that back in, so we have the integral from one to infinity of negative one to the power, the fractional of y, 
and then now just substitute everything we just evaluated in here, which we said that this is just one minus the Riemann zeta four four y. And then we said that that's the same thing as the negative, the fractional four four y. So I'm gonna just write this again. So minus, and then the, what is it? The Riemann zeta of four four y, then dy. In other words, that's the same thing as one, then to infinity of negative, and then negative one fractional of y, and then substitute this back in for, uh, I don't actually need the parentheses for this one, the fractional of the Riemann zeta of 4, 4, y, and then dy. Okay, and so to continue forward that, what we'll do is, of course, utilize that definition of the floor function. We'll say that floor of y is equal to k such that k is less than or equal to y, which is less than k plus 1 for all integers k. So now putting this back in, so now we'll have that this is the integral from one to infinity of negative and then negative one to the power y minus k and then the fractional of the Riemann zeta of 4k and dy. Okay, so now as we notice that this does not matter in the world of k, so that actually can factor out and same thing for the negative. And also to break things up term wise, we actually have to create this as an infinite sum. So now we have the negative infinite sum from k is equal to one of the fractional of the Riemann zeta of 4k, and then the integral from um, k to k plus one of negative one to the power y minus k and then dy. So what we'll notice that negative one is the same thing written in terms of Euler's identity, um, e to the power i times pi. So if I just substitute this back in, so now just to calculate the integral from k to k plus one of e to the power i pi, and then y minus k dy. Straightforward that we can see that this is the same thing written as e to the power i pi, then y minus k, and you just do the u substitution, of course. So this is just divided by, by i pi. Evaluate this from k plus one to k. And so that's just gonna equal to put everything back in together and then simplify. So we have that this is just a negative two divided by pi times i. Okay, and so now we just put this back into over here, and so therefore simplifying even further that i so far we evaluate it is going to be negative, well, positive, because we just multiplied the negative over there. Uh, 2 divided by pi i, and then multiply with the infinite sum, k is equal to 1 of the fractional of the Riemann zeta of 4k. So that actually leaves off what we have so far achieved for. Just let me just box this in just so we have an idea on what we're working with for now. And we're actually at this point halfway through. So let me actually get rid of everything that we have written down. And then we'll actually just move on to finishing um, evaluating this integral. Okay, so so far to reestablish, we have that i is equal to 2 divided by pi i times the infinite sum from k is equal 1 to infinity of the fractional of the Riemann zeta 4k. So how do we tackle on something like this? Remember that we said earlier that the Riemann zeta, well, of the fractional of the Riemann zeta of 4k, I know we originally said 4y, but as a substitution, we originally said that was the same thing as the Riemann zeta of 4k, then minus one. So notice that we can actually use the infinite series representation that this is by definition and then minus one, but that actually cancels out from one of the terms. So we actually have to fix that indices up. So in other words, this is the same thing as the infinite sum starting with instead n is equal to two of one divided by n to the power four k. So we can actually just do that substitution back over here. So now two pi i and then multiply with the infinite sum k is equal to one and then it's replaced with the fractional four k we just derive over here to here. So now we'll end up with a double sum. So infinity and then n is equal to two of one divided by n to the power four k. Uh, again, um, this is actually, for this double sum, these are absolutely convergent series, so I can actually just interchange the indices. So now instead, we what we're dealing with instead is that we have n is equal to 2, and then we're dealing with k is equal to 1 first, so 1 divided by n to the power 4k. Then we'll notice that this is actually um, specifically, so the sum we're dealing with, k is equal to 1 of 1 divided by n to the power 4k. This is the same thing as this is a geometric series, so infinity n is or k is equal to one of one divided by n to the power four and n to the power k which is can be written as the same thing as one divided by n to the power four divided by one minus one divided by n to the power four multiplied to n to the power four to both numerator and denominator so i'll have one divided by n to the power four subtract one 
what we can do here is continuing forward that keep going over here is that this is the same thing written as well just to fill in the gaps pi i and then infinity n is equal to uh, 1 divided by n to the power 4 minus 1. Now here comes the next step. What we'll do here is, and I'm just going to actually skip this step, but the justification is, you can do this as an exercise of course, that this is using some fraction decomposition that will actually have the following. So applying fraction decomposition, so we're going to have 2 divided by pi i, then multiply with the infinite sum, then what was it, n is equal to 2. Of, now what we'll have is 1 divided by 4 times n minus 1, and subtract 1 divided by 4 times n plus 1, and then minus 1 divided by 2 times n squared plus 1. Okay, and so what we'll do, what we'll notice here is that specifically we're dealing with the quantities of 1 over 4, so n minus 1, n plus 1, so let's take a look at that first. So 1 over 4, I'll factor that outside, and then the infinite sum, n is equal to 2 of 1 divided by n minus 1, and then subtract 1 divided by n plus 1. If I were to expand this out, so 1 over 4, and then now we're dealing with what we're dealing with inside. So if I actually do this piece by piece at a time, so 1 divided by 1 minus 1 divided by 3, add this with 1 divided by 2, subtract 1 divided by 4, then add this with 1 divided by 3, and then minus 1 divided by 5, then keep going on, so on, so forth that we're actually going to have some terms that I cancel out. I like to call this a special telescoping series, mainly because by really telescoping series are usually the ones that you have the first and the last terms of the expansion being left out. But what you'll notice is that this will cancel, this will cancel, this will cancel, this will cancel, so on and so forth. But we're actually just left with one half, with one and then plus one half. So to continue the expansion even further, so I have one divided by four and I multiply with one plus one half, which is three over two, which is the same thing as just three divided by 8. So now all that's left is we have to deal with this sum that's being distributed over here. And then next thing I'll do is that I'll factor out the 1 half so that now 2 will cancel out. And so we're left with just the series expansion that, so the equals is to continue this direction over here. So while, what we'll have now is 2 pi i, then distribute the 3 over 8, and then minus 2 pi i, and then with the infinite sum, n is equal to of 1 divided by yeah, 1 divided by 2 times n squared plus 1, and I just continue factoring or continue simplifying it out that we have 3, 4 pi i, and then minus 1 divided by pi i, and then with the infinite sum, n is equal to of 1 divided by n squared plus 1. Okay, so now our last objective slash the main, you know, obstacle, uh, we wouldn't really call it main, but the big obstacle here is to evaluate this infinite sum over here. And if we can do that, we can actually simplify it out and then we get our final answer just like that. So how do we actually go, go into something to this extent? So this is where residue theory and Jordan's lemma comes in, so with complex analysis specifically. So the theorem is that we want to suppose that f of z is equal to p of z divided by q of z, where p of z and q of z are polynomials, and such that the degree of q is greater than or equal to 2 plus the degree of p. We also want to assume that f of z has no poles at the point 0, plus minus 1, plus minus 2, plus minus 3, so on and so forth. Then we have that the limit as n approaches infinity of the sum, so the lower sum is k is equal to negative n, and then the upper sum is capital N of f of k is equal to negative the sum of the residues of pi times f of z times cotangent of pi of z, and evaluate it from each poles a sub j, we'll call it. So the proof really is you just use Cauchy's residue theorem and use that along the square contour with the following corners. We have n plus one half times one plus i. We have n plus one half times negative one plus i. n plus one half times negative one minus i, and then n plus one half times one minus i. Now using the theorem we um, I just uh, mentioned, so we have now the Laurent series expansion. So infinity and then n is equal negative infinity of one divided by n squared plus one is written as now negative pi. And then we just have now notice that the denominator n squared plus one, it has the poles of positive i and negative i. So we only have two things to deal with. So we have the residue of now we um, have, so and then the function f of z in this situation or f of n, for example, is um, one divided by n squared plus one. So we have cotangent of pi n and then divided by n squared plus one. Then at our pole with just i, 
and then add this with the residue of the same function yet again, so cotangent pi n and then divided by n squared plus one, but at the other pole, negative i. Okay, so we're here, so let's actually just calculate separate um, the separate residues at a time. So let's first do the first one, the residue of cotangent pi n and then divided by n squared plus one and then minus i or just i, my bad. So that means I just take the limit as n approaches i and then if I factor this out, I have an n minus i and n plus i to multiply to n minus i in the numerator that cancels out one of them. So I have a plus i on the bottom. So the limit as uh, cotangent pi n and then divided by n plus i. So that means I have just cotangent of pi i and then divided by 2i. So that's one residue down. Let's actually do the other one. The residue of cotangent pi n divided by n squared plus 1 at the pole negative i. So it's just the same thing. So the limit instead is n approaches negative i and then I have on the bottom is just going to be minus and minus i, and then so that'll just leave us with cotangent of pi, and well, rather it's um, also that cotangent is also an odd function. And so if I do the minus, so that's gets a minus, the minus will cancel, so it's just pi i and then divided by two i, just like that. And so therefore then if I just take the sums of all these together and then multiply with the negative pi as well, so then that'll just use us with negative pi and then cotangent of pi i, and then just divided by i. And then also another thing is that we'll actually use a nice identity, but first, um, if I multiply the i, then it means I get i squared, so the negative will cancel, and I have an i on the top, so i cotangent of pi times i, that's the same thing written as the following identity. It's pi times the hyperbolic cotangent of pi. Okay, so that's nice. So, and we're not done yet. Of course, we have that n is equal to negative infinity, but we actually want to figure out when we have n is equal to two. So where do we go from here? So I think this is a very interesting observation to make that if I actually just expand this series out again, so n is equal negative infinity of one divided by n squared plus one. Notice that I can actually break up the negative indices, the positive indices, and then at the term n is equal to zero separately. So that means negative one on the top, n is equal to negative infinity, one divided by n squared plus one. Evaluate this at zero, which is just plus one, and then plus the infinite sum, n is equal to one of the n squared plus one. You're gonna notice that these two are actually gonna be the same thing. The negative indices and the positive indices, they are the same thing when you plug in. So what that means is that I can actually write that as a double. So that means double, so one plus two times the infinite sum, n is equal one of one divided by n squared plus one. And so with this in mind, if I just go back to over here that the Laurent series expansion is the same thing written as this over here. So this is saying this is equal pi times hyperbolic cotangent of pi. So if I actually do the math and if I get that by itself, so if I write this out, that means I have pi divided by two hyperbolic cotangent of pi and then subtract one half. But that's just gonna yield us with n is equal to one. So if I actually subtract that out yet again, so put in one so that's one half and then subtract one half, and then that will give us exactly for the n equals two term. So that means over here, this is the same thing as pi divided by two, hyperbolic cotangent of pi and then subtract one. And so the nice little identity for hyperbolic, the hyperbolic cotangent of pi is the same thing written as e to the power of i pi plus e to the negative pi divided by e pi and then subtract e to the negative pi. This step isn't really necessary, but it wouldn't be fun if we didn't. So I'll just multiply the e to the negative pi to both the top and the bottom. So I have one plus e to the negative two pi, then divided by one minus e to the negative two pi. And so we'd actually just put everything back together. So then therefore, then this is actually going to equal pi and then multiply with one, my, one plus e to the negative two pi divided by two times one minus e to the negative two pi and then subtract one. Okay, and so we just plug that back in. So over here, so that means now to finish everything off, i is going to equal to three divided by four pi i and then minus one divided by pi i multiply with what we said over here, pi one plus e negative two pi then divided by two one minus e to the negative two pi and then subtract one okay and then now to close off everything and finish everything off 
So the, therefore, the last thing is that I'm actually gonna move this space to over here. So I, therefore, is we simplify everything out. So I have one divided by pi i, so the pi will cancel, and I'll multiply an i to both the numerator and denominator, so that means that will change that to a positive, and then distribute the one over pi i over here, but also get that to a common denominator of four pi i, and then it'll cancel that out. And of course, do the same thing with i, multiply the top and bottom. So if we do all this out, that means I have that we have i, then multiply with one plus e to the negative two pi divided by two times one, subtract e to the negative two pi, and then lastly, subtract seven i divided by four pi. And so therefore, that is our final answer, i being our given integral we want to calculate. And that actually concludes this evaluation of a monstrous integral slash redux of a video that I've always wanted to do for quite a while. So there you have it. Hope you enjoy the ride. Um, like, comment, subscribe. And um, yeah, that's uh, pretty cool if you ask me.